The last conic section that we're going to talk about is the hyperbola. And you might notice that this gen general equation looks almost identical to the ellipse general equation. Can you spot the difference here? Oh, hopefully you see it. That negative is the only difference between an ellipse equation and a hyperbola equation that we're subtracting in between. But that's going to change quite a few things. It first changes the general shape where it's not going to look like an oval anymore, and I'll show you what a hyperbola looks like here in a minute. But it also makes this to where it matters whether that x term comes first or whether the y term is first. And just like with normal numbers, 3 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 3, but 3 minus 4 is not the same as 4 minus 3. So when talking about the general forms of the hyperbola, we want to go ahead and consider both cases. The case where our x term is first, and then the case where the y term is first. Or you can think of it as the case where y is negative, the case where x is negative. However you want to think of that. Notice on both of these, we're still going to have that center at hk, so even when that y term comes first, that is still with the y value for the center. So nothing has changed there. You do have to be more careful with that though. So center still is at hk, the a or whatever is underneath the x is still going to control your left and right from the center, whatever is underneath the y, taking the square root, b is going to control your up and down. So this is generic, but I went ahead and made them the same a and b so you can see nothing is going to be different there with your center and then moving up, down, left, right. Okay, so the hyperbola is very different in what it looks like. So instead of using these points here to graph the actual um, hyperbola, we're actually going to use those to draw a box. It could be a square, but typically it's a rectangle. And this rectangle that we're drawing in is simply a guide. It's kind of like, um, we're actually going to draw an asymptote in a minute, but it is kind of like for rationals, how we draw in an asymptote to be a guide for that function. We're drawing in this rectangle to be a guide. And we're actually going to use this rectangle from here. We're going to draw in asymptotes for this that go from one vertex to the other. So we're going to go from the corner of that side of the rectangle to the opposite side. Same thing for the other two. So it's kind of like the asymptotes are a guide for the function and then the rectangle is a guide for the asymptotes. We need all of it to graph it though. So now that I have all of my guides in place, actually graphing the parabola has to do with whether x or y is the first term. And since my x is the first term and x is a horizontal direction, that means that my hyperbola is going to be horizontal. So I'm going to use the points that were to the right and the left of the, the center. And I'm going to draw in, it's basically going to be a parabola on both sides. That's kind of what a hyperbola is. I'm using those asymptotes as a guide. So that will be its vertex, but it's going to get really close to those asymptotes on either side. Same thing on the left. So this would be what the hyperbola looks like if x is the leading term. So if we have the situation where we have the same a and b values, the same center for hk, but the y term is what happens first, it leads with the y, that means that my hyperbola is going to be in the y direction. So it's going to be vertical instead of horizontal. So in that case, I'm going to use my vertex at the very top and then my asymptotes as a guide, my vertex at the very bottom, and then my asymptotes as a guide. Whoa! So for the examples we're going to look at for the hyperbola, we're going to focus mostly on just graphing it. I'm not going to label any vertices, covertices, anything like that. I just want to make sure that we can sketch a pretty, pretty close graph to each hyperbola. So same as with the circle and the ellipse, I'm going to start with the center. So my center here is going to be at 1, negative 2. Remember that the y could be the leading term, so be really careful there that you're going with what is with the x, what is with the y in that order. So I've got 1, negative 2. And then looking at what is underneath my x value, taking the square root, is going to tell me that I will go 3 to the right and 3 to the left. There isn't anything underneath the y, so you could even think of this as being a 1 underneath the y. 
Taking the square root, that would tell us we're going to go up one and down one. Remember that these points are just for us to be able to draw in that rectangle. I would definitely make it dashed because it's not part of the actual equation. We'll use the rectangle to draw in our asymptotes. And just like the ellipse in the circle, it's not going to be perfect, but you should be able to get pretty close to what this would look like if you graphed it on your calculator or something. And then our last step is to decide whether this is going to be a horizontal or a vertical hyperbola. And because the X is that leading term, that means it is going to be horizontal. So I'm looking at having kind of that parabola shape on the right and the left. Make sure that you're using that actual point that you put that was part of the rectangle that is the vertex of either side. Okay, let's try another one. For number three, first we notice y is the leading term. So I want to be really careful when choosing my center because it's still going to be what's with the x, comma, what's with the y. So I've got zero, positive one as my center. I'm still going to look for what's underneath the x to see how far I'm going to go to the right and to the left. So I'm moving five units to the right, five units to the left. Underneath my y value, I have 16, so taking the square root, that tells me I'm going up 4 and down 4. So this one almost is going to look like a square, but not quite. It's still a rectangle. Okay. Drawing in my asymptotes as best I can. And then my last step, because the y is the leading term, I know that my hyperbola is going to be vertical. So I'm using this vertex at the top and then the vertex at the bottom. Okay, last graphing example. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can graph number four on your own. So your number four should look something like this with that x direction. We did have radical 10 that happened a few times looking at our circles. So go ahead and get that decimal approximation so that we know we need to go about 3.2 to the right, 3.2 to the left. Again, not gonna be perfect, but at least getting a good idea of what's happening there. With your center, make sure that you've got negative one, zero, using the X first and then the Y. And then because the Y is that leading term, it should be a vertical hyperbola. Trying to work the opposite direction and take a graph, write the equation, is very similar to an ellipse, just that instead of having the ellipse drawn there, we're going to need to look at that rectangle. And with these, you can slightly see where it's at. So like on this one, you can notice that it's a little darker right here, but it does help to go ahead and draw in that rectangle because we are going to have to determine... Oh, did I go too far here? Yep, that's right there. We are going to have to determine how far to the right and left, up and down, that A and B value are. So we do want to go ahead and draw in that rectangle just to help us out. But then we're identifying the same things. We're identifying where the center is at. So for this one, it's at 0, 2. We're identifying that the right direction is 4 to the left and right. Vertically, it's going up and down three. So those are both important things. But now before I write an equation, I wanna make sure that I have the first term as X or Y correctly. So because this is a vertical hyperbola, I wanna make sure that the Y term is first. So I'll have Y minus two, because that was the Y value, minus our X minus zero, so X squared is fine, equals one. And then I still want to have that vertical distance squared underneath the y, the horizontal distance squared underneath the x. Okay, go ahead and see if you can write the equation for number 6 on your own. So number 6 turns out really similar. Our center is this negative 2, 1, so we should have a y minus 1 and an x plus 2. It's still vertical, so I'm still going to have that y term first. 
And then now my four and my three have just switched. So my vertical distance is four, underneath the Y should be 16. My horizontal distance is three, so underneath the X should be nine. 